Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Get on the web here. We're just going to get right into it. This is for your entertainment. Do your own research. My cat's going to be here. He's a stowaway. spends a lot of time on the wait list here. I definitely am afflicted by the waking up in the middle of the night and can't go back to sleep thing. Good theory. Not sure. Good theory though. <laughs> Disney hired some little people to dress as Pinocchio and wave people at the premiere of Pinocchio. They left them on the balcony with enough food and wine for the day, but by the late afternoon, they were all naked because the costumes were too hot. They were drunk and they were screaming swear words at people. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I don't know. I don't know what to think about this. What do you guys think? Now we're gonna combine the dream theory ish with the Disney theme for this. Realizing that Snow White never woke up, you won't believe what I found out. Has anyone ever wondered what the handsome prince's real name was? Some believe he was actually the god of the afterlife, and that he was actually looking for Snow White because he knew her time was coming. Love's first kiss was actually the kiss of death. And that explains why the dwarfs couldn't follow her, because she was going to a place of no return. Heaven. Look at how the movie ends. Snow White never actually came back to life after the prince showed up to her funeral. Which means the whole movie was just a beautiful way to live on her legacy. And if you don't believe me, Google the prince's name, you won't find it. Because he doesn't exist as a character. I'm not sure that... The prince not having a name has anything to do with it, but I definitely buy the rest of it. Seems to work out. I'm going to be perfectly honest, though. I don't remember the end of this movie. It's horrible. I mean, it's not that bad, but I definitely don't remember. I don't know. What do you guys think? Hi there. I just wanted to take a second to thank you for watching. And if you haven't already liked or subscribed, please go ahead and do so so that we can all stay connected. Thanks. Onward. In 1986, a teenage girl named Tina opened her closet and she found a teenage boy wielding a machete and wearing her mom's clothes and makeup. He tied Tina up and went around the entire house and did the same thing with the whole family. No, 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 no. One of Tina's siblings escaped and ran next door to the neighbor's house. The neighbors called the cops. The cops came and untied the family. They searched the house. They didn't find anything. The family was petrified. So they stayed with a relative for weeks, hoping that they would find this kid, but they didn't. Nevertheless, they summoned the courage to go back home. And as they were pulling into the driveway, the dad looked up and saw the boy in the second story window wearing a dress. The dad called the cops again and they made three horrifying discoveries. There was a knife in the wall, there were pennies glued to the ceiling, and there was writing on a family photo that said, I'm still here, come find me. My butt just decorated my britches! Then one officer, heart tap dancing in his chest, went down into the basement 
and inside a secret compartment in the wall underneath a pile of clothes was Tina's ex-boyfriend, Daniel LaPlante. He had been hiding in their house for months after he butchered a school teacher and her two kids. I was born on Halloween, so I'm gonna be telling spooky stories all month long. That's horrifying. Genuinely horrifying. And anytime I think there's like a creak, like a crack of one of my windows open that I didn't leave or anything, I'm just like, someone's in there. I watch a lot of horror movies, so I always think the weirdest thing is possible. That's really scary, though. What do you think the pennies glued to the ceiling meant? My horror movie mind tells me that this kid is like, your long lost secret love child of one of the parents or something. I don't know. Are fighting for America. See this on the news. We are fighting for America's future. And we understand the opportunity we have before us to turn the page on the fear. People are waking up. I was pretty shocked to see that this happened in Kalamazoo, Michigan. One more time, baby. Wow, what do you say after that one? Brutal, savage, wrecked. Absolutely taken down. That's cold blood. I feel like I would cry. <laughs> I don't know, that's so sad, but it is a little, um, keep that in mind because Michigan is one of the things I know is very important. And that's day two of that reaction. And initially, because I like to think about both sides of things, initially I thought, well, this is a, obviously some sort of sound of booing that was put over her. But, I mean, you can tell by the reactions. That's not the case. So. What do you guys think? Be kind. Be kind. But we all know what's up. Just learned that they have euthanized Peanut. And the um, raccoon as well. And the raccoon as well. Um, the raccoon's name was Fred. A baby raccoon that they rescued. As they are licensed rehabbers. And they were both taken. And euthanized. I just wanted to put this follow up of that story. Or breaking as it is. I was really hoping. That all the social media the social media viral aspect of things might have the state rethink this, but I think that they they were just too obsessed with their overreach and it was, this was senseless. But here's the follow-up. Uh, I, I am so sorry. I, I, this is, this must be really difficult for you. It not only tears my family apart, but Peanut was the cornerstone of our nonprofit animal rescue. And ten Keep in mind, this wasn't, I mean, it would matter either way. They had this squirrel for seven years. 10 to 12 DEC officers raided my house as if I was a drug dealer. I was sat outside my house for five hours. I had to get a police escort to my bathroom. I wasn't even allowed to feed my rescue horses breakfast or lunch. I was sit sat there like a criminal after they interrogated my wife to check out her immigration status, then proceeded to ask me if I had cameras in my house, then proceeded to go through every cabinet, nook and cranny of my house. Notice how they wanted to know if there were cameras in the house. Sketchy. House for a squirrel and a raccoon. They got a search warrant? They got a search warrant 
four departments and a judge signed off on a search warrant for a squirrel and a raccoon. And then they took them and killed them. Why did they go through all that to get a search warrant for an animal that had been with you very safely and the world witnessed this for seven years? Why now suddenly did they show up with a search warrant and, and take these animals? We haven't a clue. We don't know who made the, com uh, the, the complaints. Again, Peanut was an uh, indoor squirrel not harming anybody. He's been with us for seven years. Not a single complaint was ever filed for this animal. We had him for seven and a half years. He became the world's most famous squirrel. We weren't hiding him by any means. He was all over TikTok. He became the first squirrel on TikTok to ever hit a million followers. He did every news station around the world. He's helped people. He's helped kids gather joy. And then we started a nonprofit animal rescue called Peanuts Freedom Farm to help animals like Peanut fight a good fight when they're in a neglected case or they're sitting in a slaughter auction. And he was the cornerstone of our life and our organization. We used his platform to help raise money for the 300 animals we have at our sanctuary. This is, this will not stop breaking my heart. It really won't. Hold your pets close, guys. And even if you're not an animal, animal person, you have to see that how wrong this is. I said it last yesterday, but I'm going to say it again. I just hope that this was not in vain and that things change. This just seems so pointed and pointless. Scum. This toilet paper. Yeah, guys, I guess we have to start checking public toilet paper now before we use it. So I've been seeing these posts floating around the internet on various websites warning people of this toilet paper. And this isn't the only picture I've seen. I've seen multiple different pictures with similar toilet paper rolls with these little red markings all over it like you see here. And according to the post from these different websites, these are blood stains from needles. So as nasty and gross as that sounds, apparently there's some junkies who, after using their needles for their personal enjoyment, are using toilet paper from public bathrooms to clean their needles. So apparently after using their needle, they're stabbing it into these toilet paper rolls just to clean the needle off. And although obviously I don't know if that's 100% what these marks are, it does kind of resemble that. And if that's true, then that is just seriously so messed up. That is 100% what they are. I've seen this before. Beware, especially, I mean, anywhere, but I've traveled a lot. I love road trips. And you just stop at the most random of places and you don't know where you are and you just need a bathroom. You just stop and you don't think about this kind of thing, but take the time. Take the time to think about it because it's not worth putting that on you. This video, I have not watched at all. I, I like to at least kind of skim through and make sure there's nothing too crazy or too obscene for the most part. But this one just creeped me out and I didn't watch it. I wanted to watch it with you guys. So let's see. Those are from a young girl named Bella. She was home alone for over four hours when something weird, something terrifying happened to her. What sounded like her mother at her bedroom door begging to be let in. But the thing is, even though it was her mother's voice, her mother has never spoken to her like that. And she's home alone. There shouldn't be anybody there. Take a look at these videos and tell me what you think. Open the door for mommy. Bella. I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> this stuff really creeps me out. This stuff on Mimics. Do you guys know about Mimics? I'm already getting like really scared. <laughs> Come out. Hey, are you there, honey? Open the door for mommy. Bella. Come out. Hey, are you there, honey? I 
I can't. I can't. I can't. I'm gonna take these off. I'm gonna let you listen. I can't. No, I can do it. I can do it. Seven more seconds. This is really scary. I am not getting you. This freaks me out. I might not sleep again. Okay. Now, let me take a sip of coffee. I need a sec. Just give me a sec. <laughs> My cat's still in here. Okay. All right. I know it seems dramatic. But this is how scared I am. And it's really loud in my ears. Oh, thank God. I was ready to take them. Oh, my God. I just want to move on. Okay. That was scary. You know it. You were scared. It's scary. That's not normal. Let's move on. <laughs> I'm gonna give you something funny. This is weird. I feel like it's not quite as like creepy as salad fingers, but if you're into weird stuff, I thought this was funny. I've seen in so long. I don't know why. I, I wouldn't want you to get with you. You don't have to, but I'm gonna. I first saw this, I had no idea what I was looking at. It took me a second to kind of be like, oh, and I am not a fan of litter, but it is a funny video. Okay, guys. Well, that's it for you today. Hope you had a great day. I hope you have a fantastic week. I'm sorry I got so extra scared. I'm glad that you were there with me. Now I'm going to go turn on the light. And watch something happy. Any suggestions? Let me know when I should watch to forget that because I still hear it. Have a great night. Grandma, I love you.